Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at trying to enable an eco mode on the 13900K. So those of you who saw my video uh, where I did a comparison between 13900K and the Ryzen 7950X for rendering, specifically for DaVinci Resolve, saw that this CPU thermal throttles pretty terribly if you're on an air cooler and like I said in the video I don't want to have to run a fully custom loop or a 360 AIO I just don't want to deal with water in the system and there's a lot of people like me who agree with that opinion so what do we do to get this thing to not thermal throttle and to run at a proper temperature um, well we have to enable an eco mode now for AMD it's pretty easy I've already done a video about that uh, and, or you could leave it at stock and it'll probably be fine. But if you do want to cut power, check out that video to enable the 105 watt TDP power limit that essentially makes this CPU uh, more efficient than the previous 5950X while outperforming it in everything uh, multi core and single core. So um, that's definitely worth checking out. But today we're going to be looking at it on the Intel side to see how to get similar results. Um, so that the Noctua NHD15 is not overwhelmed. So I'm going to set a baseline here. We're going to go ahead and do a Cinebench run real quick. We're going to see what happens with the temperature. There we go. Yeah, it's thermal throttling pretty badly. Okay, so this is fully stock. So just, just so people know what we're looking at. So I will give you guys the score even though it is purely academic and it's, it, I don't care what the score is because I'm only concerned with the temperatures here. So 38,805, okay? So that's basically what it is. So that's what you get if you're at stock settings on a 13900K on a Noctua NHD15. So we are definitely thermal throttling and we are power limited, so we cannot hit 40K uh, at stock with an air cooler. So if you want to hit the 40K benchmark like you've seen in other videos, you have to be on a fully 360 millimeter AIO or a fully custom loop system. So, and I don't want to do any of that. So, because like I said in my live stream, I test hardware all the time. I tear these th things apart. I swap out the GPUs, I swap out memory. I cannot have the, the fully custom loop tubing all in the way. And no, I don't want to deal with that. Especially if we're going with hard tubing, so no. Uh, for most, for some people, it might be a thing, but for the average person who doesn't want to deal with the headaches of having to maintain a liquid system, uh, like myself, this is the way to go. So that's going to be the base. Now we're going to go into the BIOS and we're going to try test out some different power limit settings and we're going to see the results. So we'll be back with that here in a little bit. All right. So once you're in the BIOS, you're going to want to go to advanced mode. If you're if you load it up into a BIOS, that's an easy mode. Um, but what you want to do is you want to go to Advanced CPU Settings, and then you're going to want to go down to wherever the power, where is it at? So, uh, where is it? Turbo Power Limits, enabled. You're going to enable those, yeah, so Turbo Power Limits, you want to enable that, and then where it says Package Power Limit 1 in TDP, so that's going to be this one here. Package power limit 1 TDP in watts. So remember, your motherboard might be different. It might be in milliwatts. So just make sure you key in the right value there. So I know in Der Bauer's video, he did 90, but that's that's like more of an extreme eco mode. So what I want to do is I want to set this to 125, and we might end up doing uh, 90 watts just to see. The time is going to be the tau value, so it's going to be like typically you could specify how how many seconds you want that to be. Um, but we're, I'm just going to leave that on auto because I think the motherboard will be able to regulate that based off of the temperature. So that shouldn't be a thing. And then power limit two, this is going to be the higher power limit. So I think it's supposed to be 253. If you look at Intel's own documentation on their website, uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. Now, platform power limit and platform, I don't know what these are. I'm just going to leave those on auto and see what happens. Um, if we have to reduce this PL2 or PPL2 down to 125, 
I think that might be a thing as well. But we'll see if if enforcing these stock limits from Intel's own documentation for PPL1 at 125 watts TDP and PPL2 at 253, uh, that should get us at least the true stock, not like the motherboard trying to, you know, blow the doors off this thing and get it to go top of the charts when comparing with other motherboards. So we're going to go ahead and save those changes. Uh, and then we're going to reboot, and then we're going to see what, what we get in Cinebench after that. Okay, so we're back in Windows now with the new enforced limits. Uh, one thing I did notice is that if you come over here, Hardware Info, I strongly recommend this tool uh, as a monitoring tool for things like voltage and temperature. It's very, very thorough. You can see right here, I have now... So these are the BIOS limits that we specified, so 125 for PPL1 and 253 for PPL2. So it cannot exceed these numbers. Uh, before, it was actually exceeding those numbers by a very wide margin. Um, just to show what we had before for comparison. So before, it looks like the motherboard, you can see from there, it was basically 4,095 watts PPL1 and 2 limit. So this is the Gigabyte Aorus Master, the Z790 board, basically set it to infinity, or a number that the CPU will never be able to hit. So it would use as much power as it could possibly pull through the socket. You know, with, it's obviously it's not going to do 4,000 watts, but it's it's basically unlimited power. This is unlimited power. So so unfortunately, Gigabyte, the BIOS that it had, it's basically running it in unlimited power out of the box which is kind of annoying um, because it's not the true actual value or the actual limits. So now we're going to run it with the actual Intel enforced limits and we're going to see what we get in terms of temperature. So let's do a run here and see if we're still thermal throttling. Okay. So that looks better and I can see that the package power limit is more controlled. But I can already tell this is taking longer, so this is going to score lower. But by how much lower is what I'm curious to see. Okay, so... This is with Intel's own limits. You guys can see. Just like I said before, 125 and 253. And you can see the package power. Okay, so our maximum value during that render run for Cinebench was... 228. 228 was the uh, the CPU package power, and then we had 226 for the IA core power. Um, so so basically, this top one's the one that actually matters because this is your package power. Uh, and then our limit was 125 for PPL1 and 253 PPL2. So let's look at the temperatures. So the good news is now. The package temperature, it's not thermal throttling anymore. So it did not, yeah, so it did not thermal throttle. So that's the good news, is that our temperatures for the package, it didn't go, it didn't go, it didn't hit 90C on that Cinebench run. Um, now, I do think, though, with a long DaVinci Resolve render or Adobe Premiere render, it could still hit 90C, but this is a lot better. So the 88C is definitely better. However, the bad news is the performance loss. So if we go and look at the score, you guys can see we scored 32,643. So that's still a respectable score. It's not, not a terrible score. It's still faster anything. It's still faster than anything that 12th gen can do. Um, but it is now a little bit behind the 7950X. So just, just to put things into perspective, if you guys watched my Ryzen Eco Mode video on the 7950X, with Eco Mode uh, in Cinebench with the air cooler, same air cooler, uh, the Ryzen is scoring over 35,000, just over 35,000. Now with Eco Mode on Intel, you're doing 32,600. So um, you are giving up some performance, the thing is, though, the temperatures are far more controlled. And as you can see here, 
our clock speed, we still managed to hit 5.8 on one or two cores at the maximum. So we didn't lose in terms of clock speed uh, changes from enforcing eco mode. But I do want to point out though that because some people might mention undervolting as an alternative, I personally don't like undervolting because you're asking for trouble. If you're going to do undervolting, you're going to have to test stability. You're going to have to run, you know, whatever whatever you use to, to test for stability if you're overclocking the CPU. So if you're underclocking, you have to do the exact same thing, Prime 95 or whatever, Intel burn test. You know, there's a lot of different things. Run games for a couple of hours and see if the game crashes a desktop or, or if you get like a BSOD or that sort of thing. So I do not recommend undervolting. Um, however, I do recommend power limiting because if you power limit, and in, in, in this case, all we have done is set... We've enforced the stock Intel spec on the motherboard. So we're not able to exceed the 253 watts for the PPL2. And that is within the realm of the Noctua NHD15's ability to cool the CPU. The Noctua, te technically the Noctua NHD15 is rated for, you know, around 250 watts for a CPU at full load. So we're just over that by three watts but it's not gonna be that big of a deal. If you wanna go in and set it to 250 uh, on the PPL2 and the BIOS, you can, you can easily do that. Or if you wanna tune it even further down like Der Bauer did in his video, which was an excellent video, definitely check that out because it does show that 13th gen is way, way more efficient than 12th gen uh, when it comes to rendering performance. Uh, and you're not really giving up anything in terms of gaming benchmarks either. So the same is true for the AMD. Uh, so I hope you guys found this video useful. I think 88C at full load uh, with, now granted it is still using more power than AMD, you know, two, 253 versus the maximum socket on AMD is like 230 watts, um, but that is without eco mode. So if you enable eco mode on the AMD, it'll still be way less than 13th gen. Um, however, now the temps are within range, which is a good thing to see. So uh, definitely it's good news for me because I don't have to go liquid cooling. And I am giving up quite a bit of multi-thread performance though, unlike AMD. It's not a big deal if you value temps and longevity because if I don't like running the processor at 100 Celsius like while well, doing long renders. Um, but anyway guys, hope you found this video useful. Uh, and leave a comment below if you guys have any more uh, test settings that you guys have tried in terms of power limit um, or, or your experience with undervolting and overclocking on this platform. I'm always curious. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and I appreciate everybody for watching the video and if you like this sort of content, feel free to subscribe. It helps me out. Uh, makes me feel motivated to keep making more tech related videos like this. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. And once again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.